not exactly the origin story you want for the Olympic Games. Hello humans, my name is Dale Kingsmill and the Rio 2016 Olympics have begun! Despite all of the evidence to the contrary, I actually uh, do enjoy watching the Olympics. I'm not that into sport, I am wary of the jingoism that the Olympics can uh, occasionally elicit. I have often thought about how we should just not have the Olympics one four year cycle and instead spend the money on solving a bunch of the world's problems and yet the Olympics come around and it just it hits me in my sentimental core, you know, in my heart. And so of course I thought this was the perfect opportunity to tell a story from mythology about the origins of the Olympic Games. How much this story has to do with the Olympics really is contested by myself, if not by others. But it's a fun story and it's thematic, so let's go for it. If I remember correctly, the actual mythological explanation for the beginning of the Olympic Games, Olympic Games, was that uh, Heracles at some point got distracted in his adventures and just started like stomping a bunch and made some athletics grounds and stood around shouting that he was the strongest ever, lifting things and shouting that he was the best sportsman ever, ever born. No one was competing against him, it was just him alone in a field with Zeus going, yeah, check out my son, check out how great my son is. And so the Olympic Games were born, but the story we're gonna be looking at is one brought to us by Pelops, that young lad that uh, that we talked about a couple weeks ago. You remember in the story of Tantalus, you can click on it right here if you haven't seen it already. There was that little situation where he, uh, where he murdered his son and tried to feed him to the gods. Yeah, that was Pelops. So after Pelops, was resurrected and given a shiny new ivory shoulder by Demeter and Hephaestus to replace the one that Demeter had accidentally eaten, Poseidon uh, developed a little bit of a crush on young Pelops. Young Pelops was an exceedingly handsome fellow. And so the sea god whisked the youth away to Olympus uh, to, to sort of semi-woo him under the guise of teaching him how to drive a chariot. He was gonna make him the best damn charioteer the world had ever seen. I mean, god of horses, you gotta imagine, pretty good at chariot stuff, I guess. But then Pelops' dad Tantalus screwed things up for him again, done messed with Zeus's stuff, and uh, Pelops was kicked out of Olympus by a very angry Zeus. Now this is where the juice of the story really begins. See, Pelops, now back living a normal mortal life, decided that it was time for him to marry him a wife and become king of some place. And who did he set his heart and eyes on? None other than the Nyon out of reach Hippodamia. Why out of reach you ask? Well that's because her father, King Onimaeus, had decided that he was gonna go into full-on protective dad mode. We're talking the standard patriarchal show your daughter's date your shotgun kind of a sitch. Except his version of it was to uh, to tell any of his daughter's suitors that if they wanted to marry Hippodamia they would have to beat him in a chariot race. Specifically, this race consisted of uh, them taking Hippodamia in their chariot, him sacrificing a goat to Zeus, and then immediately uh, making chase after them. And if he caught up with them, he would stab them with a spear. He would absolutely spear them through the back. That was the price they paid for not being a good enough charioteer to win his daughter. I am not surprised to be won. Jasmine, he's a champ. But see, Pelops, who had just spent a good chunk of his life learning how to be a brilliant charioteer from the Olympian god of horses, thought that maybe he was in with a shot. Thought so with good reason. But then the balance was shifted into King Onimaeus' direction once again, because as it turned out, he was a son of Ares, and Ares had gifted him some immortal horses. How their immortality helped them to be really fast, I don't know, but I mean, everyone, the, the consensus seems to be that they were real good, godlike horses that were great at racing and whatever. So then Pelops prayed to Poseidon for winged horses, or a winged chariot, or winged horses. To, to drive his his winged chariot. There was a lot of wings. He wanted to be really hella fast. And so at this point, 
Pelops was probably going to win the race. He was probably going to escape with Hippodamia, and the two of them would live in, you know, like marital bliss or whatever the ancient Greek mythology equivalent of marital bliss is. It's not, it's not too blissful from what I gather. But just for good measure, and probably because being a jerk runs in his family, Pelops decided that he was gonna cheat. He was gonna cheat at the sporty game thing. Pelops took, uh, took King Onimaeus' charioteer aside and said, hey buddy, uh, you wanna, wanna help me out here? I will give you a certain percentage of this kingdom's land, all right? If you help me out by replacing Onimaeus's linchpins in his chariot's axle, is that what it's called? The thing that joins the wheels, the, the bits, the mechanical bits. If you replace his linchpins with linchpins made of wax, I will give you a huge amount of land. And King Onimaeus's charioteer thought that was a great deal. He took it instantly on the spot. Mm. So uh, Pelops, he was he was pretty set at this point. The race was organized. Pelops set off in flight along the the racetrack with Hippodamia by his side. King Onimaeus very relaxedly took a lamp, sacrificed it in Zeus's honor, uh, so that he may have good fortune in this race. Clearly, he didn't know what was up, and off he went. He's gonna catch the guy and spear him through the back. As Onimaeus is going flat out trying to catch Pelops in his flying chariot with the flying horses, the speed becomes too much for the wheels, you see? Flames start shooting off from them and the linchpins made of wax begin to melt. The wheels fly off Onimaeus' is thrown, there's this huge crash of the chariot, and King Onimaeus is killed, securing Pelops' place as king of this here kingdom, and husband of the fair Hippodamia. Who doesn't mind so much about a dad because she'd fallen in love with Pelops or whatever? He was really pretty, and he did have a very fancy ivory shoulder. With his dying breaths, King Onimaeus curses his charioteer and says, I condemn you to die at the hands of Pelops because you betrayed me. As Pelops is making his victory lap around the sky in his flying chariot with flying horses, I don't know, I guess he'd picked up uh, Onimaeus' charioteer cheetah person on the way or something, because suddenly Pelops turned on the turncoat. There's some phrase about cheating on a cheetah that would apply here, but I can't think of what it is. Dang! Pelops straight up kicks the charioteer out of the flying chariot when they're just miles and miles above ground. And as he's plummeting, the charioteer calls out, Oh, curse you, Pelops, I curse you! I don't know if that was like a specific thing to the curse, I think it was just general ill fortune. Which I mean, honestly, was gonna come to the family of Tantalus anyway, so just add it to the pile, I guess. But I always like it when there's a chain of death curses going on. It's always nice. And Pelops founded a funeral games in the kingdom in honor of the king that he had kind of killed. And then ages later, this other guy uh, actually brings in some Olympic spirit. He prayed to an oracle to ask how he could stop all the Greek nations from fighting, and the oracle suggested that he bring back the games. And so they do that, and people stop fighting because there's peace and they make Olive, olive wreath things. So that's the story from mythology, kind of, that is the beginning of the Olympic Games. Are you watching the Olympics? Let me know in the comments below if you are and what sports you're particularly interested in. If you enjoy mythology, then you might consider subscribing to this channel. That way you can see videos from me on the regular, many, many of which are storytelling videos, usually mythology, sometimes fairy tales, and a bunch of other geeky content as well, of course. If you enjoyed this video, then I would love it if you could hit the like button down below. It really helps support the channel as it does leaving comments, or share the video on your favorite social media website. I am on many of these social media websites, you can find the links to them in the description below. My friend Lyndall, who I've known for 
a million years. We go way back. We've known each other since we were very, very little. She just got done doing production design work on a web series that's just started going out. It's just started going out today that I'm filming this. My camera battery died with about five seconds left to go, so screw that, I'm doing the rest on my phone. The web series is called Camping. You can find a link to it in the description if you're interested in checking that out. Apart from that, I do believe that's it. I'm done. Email this to your grandma and I will see you some other time. It is quarter to three in the morning. It's prime time for filming mythology vlogs, of course, of course.